Hey everyone, my name is Melissa Strange and welcome to another episode of For the Love of Drag. RuPaul has revealed the queens of All Stars 3, of RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars 3. They were revealed this past Friday. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I was way more excited for All Stars 2 because I knew Alaska was going to be on it and she won it. And here's my new Alaska shirt. I was really excited about All Stars 2. All Stars 3 I'm really interested in because here's the thing, I don't super duper love all of the queens on it. There's actually a few of the queens that like, I don't really care for if that makes sense. Like I think they're all really talented and I'm excited to see what all of them bring to the table and we'll get into each one, but I'm just, I was more excited for All Stars 2, but in a different way than I am for All Stars 3. But I can't believe it's only really been like a year in between the two when we had to wait so many years in between the first All Stars and the second. Let's get into this. Also make sure you hit the subscribe button. I will be making RuPaul's Drag Race review videos about All Stars. I also have a story time coming up about a drag show that I went to very recently with some exciting, cool stuff that happened. And I'm sorry that I haven't posted in a little while. It was summer and I was so busy and it's just been really hard to catch back up on videos, but you'll be seeing quite a few being posted to my channel in the extremely near future. So make sure you subscribe, hit the like button and comment down below with some stuff that you'd like to see. And this year the queens were revealed totally different than usual. We've got a where are they now storyline and I'm so excited. Let's start with Shangela because everybody knows I thought Shangela should have come back for the last season. Uh, I know she's already been back before, which is why I didn't really think she'd be brought back for another All-Stars, but Shangela is so bloody good. I'm sorry, I've seen her live. That queen, she works. You better work. She came to work. She is a working girl. She kills it, okay? Shangela's amazing. If you look at the actual storyline of Shangela on the show, in season two, she lasted one episode. Eh, nobody liked her, to be honest. I'm pretty sure in season two, she was like pretty much the least liked queen. She's also, she went home first and is probably more known than all the other queens who have gone home first. And it's also probably because she came back for season three where she came in sixth place, I believe. And the growth for her in that one year from doing season two, where she had only been doing drag for like five months to season three, where she had been doing drag for a year and five months. Now it's years later, years later. Like what's, what, when was two, when was that? In 2000 and like, I want to say like nine or something, maybe. 2010? I don't know. It's just been a long time since Shangela has been on Drag Race. She has been touring the entire world and I am living. I cannot, I think she's gonna make it really, really far. Season eight queen Thorgy Thor is back. I liked Thorgy in season eight. I believe she was one of the people right at the start that I said I was excited to see. Um, I'm actually really happy that she's back. She wouldn't have been one of the queens I would have thought to come back so soon to All Stars. Uh, I think she'll be good for the drama because I think she really helped with the drama of season eight. Although season eight to me wasn't really super drama full, dramatic, drama full, geez. Uh, it just, it was, I love season eight. Bob the Drag Queen did amazing and the beef between Thorgy and Bob was so good. So I'm interested to see if Thorgy's gonna have beef with anyone else. It wasn't even really beef, it was just like, well, y'all watched it. So kind of excited to see who Thorgy might be a little catty with or something or how she's changed since season eight. I just love Thorgy's energy and charisma and just Thorgy's an awesome queen. So I'm actually really excited that she's on the show. She's perfect, she's beautiful. She might not look like Linda Evangelista, but she has come up with some of the best lines of recent history of RuPaul's Drag Race. Season nine queen Aja is back at it. Again, here's the thing, I'm hoping we get mostly the untucked version of Aja and the reunion version of Aja. If we can have like those two piled together more in this season, she'll be one of the funniest queens on the show, hands down, because she just honestly says it how it is. She has all these crazy lines that she comes up with. She's younger than, I'm pretty sure she's younger than most of the queens who are on this season. She's gotta be. Because most of the queens this season are what, like in their mid 30s probably? Because I think, and Aja, I don't remember how old Aja is. Aja's probably in her early 20s. I should have probably done more research into that. 
<laughs> but anyways, she was such a fan favorite before season uh, nine even started. And I'm really excited that she's getting this second chance where she's a little bit more polished, has more experience than she did before. And I, I think she's gonna do pretty well. Gigi Devane is back. Season eight queen, loving her turkey necks. She is back for All Stars 3. Okay, at the beginning of season eight in the like meet the queens for that, I believe I didn't like Chi Chi. Chi Chi's development in season eight was amazing. She came what, in fourth or something? Her bitch perfect thing when that competition where she spun up, she was standing on her hands, was doing the neck thing and lip syncing and like twerking all at the same time she like gained all of my respect in that moment i really like chi chi i am really excited to see what she's gonna do on this show the only thing was like i can't remember if it was in the meet the queens part of the videos that were online or if it was the where are they now thing where she was talking about like a huge part of her in season eight was that she didn't have money she had to use her resources and whatever she had around to make what she had and it kind of hurt her a little bit because some of her stuff looked more basic as Michelle would put it um, than the other queens and I do think that did hurt her a little bit in season eight but the way she was talking back in season eight about like having money and being broke and struggling to the way she was talking about having money now and like spending it all at Whole Foods and buying this and buying that I didn't love that because I don't love when people who don't have money get money and then they're like super oh I have money now you know like let me buy this let me buy that like if you came from nothing most people who come from nothing I feel like would be really humble about having money now and they're usually more cautious about spending money or flaunting that they have money because they didn't have it that's at least what I've noticed from other people on the internet or on TV or in real life who have come into money after not having money for pretty much their whole life so I didn't love that about Chi Chi, but I'm still really excited to see her with better resources than she did in season eight and bring it on because she also had some crazy lines. She makes me laugh and she's really talented. So let's go Chi Chi. Season six, Ben de la Creme. Y'all know I don't really like her. Here's the thing. I'm, I, it's the same reason why I didn't like James Mansfield because I don't really like that like high pitch squeaky like super nice and girliness of some of the queens I've seen in the world um and that's pretty much why I didn't like her in season six was because well season six had so many so many good people adore Courtney Bianca uh, then there's like crazy outspoken people Ganja Gia like it was such a crazy season who else on the Trinity K Bonet I'm pretty sure was on season six like it was just such a crazy season that she kind of like just didn't do anything for me if that makes sense during season six although there was parts that i thought she was funny but then there was also large parts that i thought she was trying too hard to be funny but i she made me laugh in her where are they now meet the queens thing so you know what i'm actually excited for her to be on the show she won miss congeniality hopefully she's gotten her sweetness then again i mean pretty much everyone was crazy on on her season except for i guess maybe her and that's why she got miss congeniality because she was the only nice-ish queen or something, but I am excited for her to be on All Stars 3 because it's going to give me a chance to maybe like her more, if that makes sense. I've seen her live. I actually liked seeing her live. She was, I'm uh, pretty sure it was for one of those like Battle of the Seasons shows. Either that or was she on Work the World? Might have been both. I don't remember. I've seen too many drag shows. I can't keep track of them all, but I think... I'm gonna like her more now because out of the queens that are on this season she's one of the funnier ones you guys know I really like comedy queens campy queens stuff like that I'm not a huge fan of the high-pitched nicey niceiness I like the shady comedy side of, of it all I was pretty big into insult comedy as a young one and so maybe that's why I like people like Bianca and Willem and stuff so I am Definitely excited that Ben de la Creme is on this season. I'm hoping that I become her fan. Oh, we're getting a tall glass of milk. It's milk in time. Also, season six, milk is back. I forgot milk was on season six when I was just talking about season six. Milk serves it to you. She was one of my favorites on season six and I was really sad to see her go. I also didn't like the outfit she wore in the episode that she went home, but 
she serves the looks. She is in fashion. She is doing high fashion. She is with doing ads for Marc Jacobs. Everything Milk posts online, I'm like, yes, Milk, take these likes. I love you, Milk. Milk is amazing. Uh, I am so excited to see the looks that Milk turns out. Like, look at this in the meet the queens in the in the promo shoot. She's wearing like a bodybuilder full thing and is like, I'm the manly queen. And look like still not like a man. It was just amazing. So I'm so excited to see what milk brings out for this season. Oh, I'm thirsty for some more milk. Season seven, Trixie Mattel, the fan favorite to win this season, All Stars 3, potential winner, uh, because I'm pretty sure that's what majority of the internet thinks and wants to happen. I love Trixie. Oh, honey, I love me some Trixie. I liked her more after season seven, seeing her with her show on YouTube with Katja and now the show that's gonna be on TV, the Trixie and Katja show, and then her album, which is amazing. I'm a musician. I appreciate music. I love majority of the Queen's music that has come out, but there's something different about Trixie because A, it's a different style of music, but also she's the one playing the guitar. Like, I just really, really, really appreciate and think she has so much talent and I'm so excited. Now that Trixie is more comfortable, I think. I feel like in season seven, she didn't feel or look as comfortable in front of cameras as she's gonna be now. Because now I think she has so much confidence and maybe that was part of what she was lacking before. She went home and got take, brought back on in her season. I think now the confidence that she's built because she sees how much fans love her and stuff, that she is going to do incredibly well on All Stars 3. Also from season seven, we have Kennedy Davenport and she didn't get the greatest reputation on her season. I think her and Jasmine Masters were kind of seen as like bullies, not even like funny. They were seen as like these bully, know-it-all, not very nice people on their season. I think Kennedy has tons of talent. The dancing, the actual character of Kennedy is really well done and she knows who she is. I think she's such a performer and such a dance queen and pageant queen and whatnot. I'm just really excited to see what she's gonna bring this season. I think that she's going to be a force to be reckoned with because she's very seasoned. She has more experience in season seven. I mean, everyone has more experience since their seasons. So I guess I could say that about literally everyone, but I just think that there's something about Kennedy we didn't get in her season because there was so many, season seven, there was a lot of like this like high fashion kind of thing happening where you had like Pearl, Miss Fame, Violet, like they were serving like very fashion model drag. And then you had like Jasmine and Kennedy who were like more the like old school kind of drag. Then you had like Trixie and Katja who kind of do their own thing. Uh, we're just gonna stay, stick with that. We don't have to go into the other queens probably cause right now they're not popping into my mind, but that's it. So it's like, I'm just, I think that she's gonna do better on All Stars 3 than, or have a better reputation on All Stars 3 than she did in season seven. Cause I think season seven, she made it to, to final four right? So I think she she will definitely make it very far in, in, in All Stars 3. And lastly, the queen that I'm hoping brings all the beef to the table, Morgan McMichaels from season two, had everything and anything to say during her season, and she started off the fights, and I'm hoping that she basically stirs the pot every single episode and serves it up, but I don't know if she will because Chad Michaels, who won All Stars the first time, for first All Stars, is her drag mother, so I don't know if she'll she is more poised and wants to maybe join her drag mother in the house of RuPaul in the all-star land hallway thing that they're trapped in, whatever that room is, in the hall of all-stars. Um, so I don't know if she's gonna be super catty. I'm sure she has grown the most. She's had the most time to grow, pretty much. I mean, I guess Shangela and her both started in season two, but I'm just saying, Morgan has had so much time to grow. She's constantly been doing drag since she's been off Drag Race, and I'm very excited. Also, I think it's good for her, like how Tatiana came on All Star Season 2, because Tatiana got a bunch of new followers from it and, you know, gained a better fan base. And I think that's cool when these uh, older season queens come back, because a lot of people haven't been watching RuPaul's Drag Race from the start uh, or haven't gone back and watched, which just doesn't make sense to me. If you are a fan of the show, why you didn't go back and watch the previous seasons. It makes, the show makes so much more sense if you know all of 
everything, right? It just, it's more fun, at least I think. <laughs> so I'm gonna give you some of my quick predictions here. Um, top two pick, I'm gonna go with Trixie and Shangela. I think the two of them are going to make it to the end. As for the third, I'm kind of flipping between a few people. Like it could be some somebody like Milk could really turn it. Chi Chi could really turn it. Uh, Kennedy Davenport, Aja, like there's so many queens that I mean, pretty much anyone could be in the top three. I think deservingly one of those two definitely deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. It's also technically a third time each of them have been on the show because Trixie got brought back on her season and Shangela got brought, brought back for season three. So technically they've been brought back three times each now, but technically Shangela was brought back for three seasons. Whatever, you guys get it. Out first, it's really hard to say. I could see it being like, I don't even know who it's gonna be, but if I had to guess, I'm gonna go with either Morgan McMichaels, Thorgy, or Benda La Creme out first. I don't, it's so hard to say, honestly. I think, or those three might go home like earlier in the, sh in the show than near the end. Oh, also there's supposed to be a 10th queen. I'm not even gonna comment on that because I don't know who it's gonna be. There's so much speculation, I can't even go near it. I think it's ridiculous if it's gonna be a previous winner of, of RuPaul's Drag Race coming back. That literally makes no sense in my mind. Uh, so I don't I don't want it to be all-stars with one all, like, I don't think the, a winner should be back unless it's an all-winner season. So that part is just, I'm really hoping that's not true because I heard that rumor. I also heard a weird rumor that Trixie has like a mental breakdown because she had to film a bunch of the episodes for her new show or maybe it wasn't for the new show but for the youtube show right before she left for all stars and that she didn't really have enough time to prepare and she mentally went from like a bunch of stuff to just jumping into all stars and i heard yeah that she has some sort of breakdown but i don't know if that's just a rumor if that's true yeah i don't know i'm i'm just really excited to see the shade and the talent and the looks and everything so please make sure you subscribe to my channel let me know in the comments down below who do you think is gonna win? Who is your top two pick? You can do a top three if you want. I know it's very difficult. Also let me know who you think might be going out first, but if you actually know for sure any real true spoilers, please don't put them in the comments down below. I know some people really like these spoilers, but go on Reddit for that. Don't leave it down in the comments to spoil it for people who aren't actually looking for it to be spoiled. I promise you it's more fun finding out in real time. Although some people really like knowing secrets in advance. I can be more patient. I've had too many seasons of RuPaul's Drag Race ruined. I don't want this one to be ruined too. Anyways, everyone, once again, my name is Melissa Strange. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I will be back very, very soon with another episode of For the Love of Drag. Till next time, stay strange.